Will everyone please rise for the national anthem? Leading us in the national anthem is a 2002 graduate, Galen Caldwell. Galen received his BA in vocal performance in 1997 from Chicago State University and currently holds the rank of sergeant in the Chicago Police Department in their legal affairs division. Please welcome Galen. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watch was so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave May be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2013 commencement ceremony of IIT Chicago Kent College of Law. Today I am pleased to welcome our graduating class as well as their family and friends to celebrate this great milestone. We celebrate your graduation as a community and know that without the family and friends we would, this milestone would not have been possible. Joining me on stage are my colleagues, Chicago Kent faculty, and alumni and friends of Chicago Kent, as well as Scott Turow, our commencement speaker. And what a year this has been. You have learned from Supreme Court Justice Stevens about judicial takings and the art of judging, and from Judge Posner about patent rights and the role of the Supreme Court in public opinion. A number of you listened to Susan Herman, president of the ACLU, discussing the balance between collective security and individual freedom. You've attended conferences on the role of Sharia and Halakha in our society, on social networking and privacy, on gay marriage, trends in employment law, compliance, and so much more. Some of you joined over 800 alumni and friends as we celebrated our 125th anniversary, replete with well wishes from President Obama and Governor Quinn. As students, you've been educated by Lori Andrews, whose recent work on social networking and the law has been celebrated across the country, by Evelyn Brody and Steve Harris, who lead national and international law reform efforts in their respective fields of not-for-profit law and secure transactions. And you've been taught by Marty Mallon, a presidential appointee whose work has been seminal in understanding the changing role of public employee unions, which continues to be of critical importance in Illinois and across the country. You have excelled under the tutelage of Dave Erickson and Kent Stressman, winning numerous national tournaments in advocacy and bringing honor and wider acclaim to the university. You've immersed yourselves in the life of the community, volunteering hundreds of hours in places from equipped for equality to working hands legal clinic. All of you have made incredible intellectual strides as students. You've mastered complex jurisdictional and securities principles, and you've learned how to cross-examine a witness and write a term sheet. You have grappled with arcane constitutional questions and challenges from the increasing globalization of law. And let's make sure we increase the 95% bar passage rate of last year's class. Go ahead. <laughs> This ceremony is a culmination of years of hard work and dedication. 
and you've gained the skills necessary to serve corporations and governments, individuals, and social causes. You are well positioned to parlay those skills into professional success in a constantly changing world. Today is more about beginnings than endings. I wish you well in your careers, wherever they take you, in law or in elsewhere. And I encourage you to use those skills you have learned, ambitiously, but with integrity and civility. Our first speaker represents the class of the JD class of 2013, this year's valedictorian, Luke Harriman. Luke came to Chicago Kent after earning a BA in economics at, and in Latin American studies from the University of Chicago. A native of Montana, Luke was the notes and comment editor for the Chicago Kent Law Review and was president of the Christian Legal Society. He served as a teaching assistant for criminal law and civil procedure. And this fall, Luke will join the Chicago office of Reed Smith in its estate planning practice. On a personal note, I've worked with Luke for three years and I'm convinced that he has a will excel as a leader in the profession. Luke? Thank you, Dean Krent. Three years ago, I told my family and friends that I was going to law school. One person I told was pretty surprised to hear this. Law school, he said, but you're such a nice guy. At the time, I actually shared some of the concerns that he had. I knew that I was interested in law, and I knew that I wanted to practice law. But I had heard some bad stories about lawyers, and I was a bit worried about what kind of person I might become if I went to law school. Fortunately, after three years at Chicago Kent, I've reached the conclusion that it is indeed possible to be both a lawyer and a, quote, nice guy. I've reached this conclusion because of the people I've met here at Chicago Kent. The people I've met here have inspired me given me role models to follow, and convinced me that one can, in fact, be both a good person and a good lawyer. Many of these people are the professors that we have had here. This year, I had the chance to be a teaching assistant for two professors teaching first year classes, Professor Heyman for criminal law and Professor Stewart for civil procedure. Both of them have shown me just how much effort goes into teaching a law school class. They truly care about their jobs, and I think it shows in the quality of teaching we have had here at Chicago Kent. By being a teaching assistant, I also got to experience a little bit of what law school is like from the professor's point of view. For example, getting emails the day before the final exam asking, hey, can you explain this whole personal jurisdiction thing to me? <laughs> Believe it or not, class of 2013, we were like those first year law students once. But I think we've come a long way. We've gone from knowing nothing about the law to knowing a great deal, which we will hopefully remember when we take the bar exam. I have learned a great deal from all of you over the past three years, and I consider it a privilege to have gotten to know all of you during our time in law school. I know that all of you are committed to practicing law with integrity, and I know that you are also committing to helping those less fortunate through the practice of law. Your commitments have inspired me. I'd like to encourage you to maintain those commitments as we begin to practice. I'd also like to encourage you to make one more commitment, to give back to the younger generations of lawyers and law students. It's easy to forget just how much our professors and other mentors have given us. I think we all have a responsibility to give to the next generation in the same way. So, to conclude, I want to thank three groups of people. First, I want to thank my family, especially my parents, Dwight and Sue, my parents-in-law, Kai and Sarah, my sisters, Elena and Kelsey, and my wife, Mary. Without your prayers and support, I never would have made it through law school. Second. I want to thank the faculty and staff here at Chicago Kent for all of the time and effort they have spent on our behalf. Finally, I want to thank all of you, my classmates. I may have learned more from you than anyone. Thanks to all of you, I've come to the happy conclusion that one can be both a good person and a good lawyer. So, class of 2013, after three years of law school, four years of college, four years of high school, three years of middle school, and six years of elementary school, including kindergarten. That's a total of 20 years for those of you keeping score in the audience. This is it. We are now ready. I think Chicago Kent has prepared us very well for the future. And because of that, I am very confident that all of you will do great things in your careers. But now it's time to say goodbye, to leave law school forever, and enter the real world. I'll see you all at the Barbie lecture in the auditorium tomorrow morning. Thank you. <laughs>
Our LLM class speaker this year is Jing Jing Huang, a graduate in the International Intellectual Property Law Program. Jing Jing is a native of China. She earned her bachelor's degree in computer science from the Beijing Institution of Technology and Information and a Juris Master's degree from the University of International Business and Economics. She has practiced law in Beijing since 2008, focusing on family law um, and criminal law. And after graduation, Jin Jing plans to sit for the California bar and then recalibrate her legal work to focus on intellectual property. Please welcome Jin Jing Huang. Good afternoon, Dean Krant, Dean Harris, parents, friends, guests, and fellow graduates. It's an honor and privilege to have this opportunity to speak for the LM students and for myself. One year ago, I was still wondering whether it is a good idea to leave my job, my current clients, and my newly married husband to come to study at Chicago Kent. Now I wish I could have one more year. For <laughs> I, I, I still want to take a lot of course, and because I missed Halloween, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and all kinds of Chicago Kent events. <laughs> yes, shame on me that I've been so focused on my studies that I missed a lot of fun in Chicago. However, although sometimes painful, I did find a lot of fun in my studies. Someone famous once said, nothing that comes easy is worth a dime. I think my struggle in Chicago Kent was re really worth the um, struggling with English language, difficult legal concepts, and of course, worth the tuition. It's hard, it's especially for the LM students whose native language is not English. Some of us have practiced the law in our home countries, but the legal system and the um, way of thinking are quite different here in the US. Learning how to read cases and extract the reasoning and the rules is the first mountain we had to climb. Early on in my studies, I can recall I need four or five hours just to read and brief cases before class. And then there was my intellectual seminar, which really drove me and my international classmates crazy for the heavy amount of research and writing a lengthy paper. It's, it's a feeling like uh, needing to run before one has learned how to walk. But after all the painstaking reading, writing, discussing, and analyzing, when I step back and look at what I, what we have achieved, only pleasure and pride remains in my heart and the hearts of my classmates. It has, been, uh, it has uh, truly been a year of great accomplishments for us all. And these accomplishments could not have been done without all the programs, guidance, and, and help provided by Chicago Kent faculty and the staff. If I were to award medals, the first one would go to the excellent professors who, though differing in teaching styles, are also professional, responsible, helpful, and kind. I think I felt a part of my brain die in keeping up with the speed of, of the Professor Clean in the evidence class, <laughs> <laughs> and, and was then revived by charming smile and the help of assistance of Professor, Professor Lee in the intellectual property class. <laughs> And the second medal would go to all the faculty and the staff in the institutes and the centers who are always ready to help, especially um, the career service staff who helped me build an effective resume and prepared me for job interviews. Chicago Kent LM programs for international students also makes it possible for the bright law students and the lawyers from all over the world to come together in this great school and exchange their knowledge of law, share their respective cultures, and become friends. It's a shame that we don't have more time together. One more thing I would like to add about my experience in Chicago Kent. This experience, I believe, forms a small part of a great bridge in, between the US and all of the countries from which my international classmates come. As lawyers, we are likely in the future to be involved in and even responsible for work that crosses borders. And further, lawyers are often deeply involved in social change. The time we have spent at Chicago Kent together have, has given us a shared experience that helps bring one's distant corners of the world closer together. I am proud to be a part of that future. In conclusion, with all the knowledge, skills, and the resources we take, we take with us from Chicago Kent, I sincerely believe in a bright future for us all. So let's celebrate for the new beginning. Thank you.
At this time, I'd like to recognize recipients of the Bar and Gavel Awards, who, which honor those who have provided outstanding service to the college, the community, and the legal profession. Please stand when I call your name and hold any applause until the end. Emily Acosta, Dunstan Barnes, Abby Bohenek, Kylan Fisher, Alexandra Grace, Peter Henry, Sabrina Leonard, Anne Marfizi, Thomas Reynolds, Sylvia St. Clair, Cynthia Sun, and Rosemary Tariath. Congratulations on your achievements. You may be seated. A number of guests on stage with us today are alumni or members of our university community. They have the special opportunity to see up close their children, their spouses, and other relatives graduate while serving as legacy hooders and welcoming them to the alumni community. This special tradition allows family members to bestow the doctoral hoods on their graduates when their names are called. They are Nicholas Betts, hooded by his father, Russell Betts, Dean of the College of Science and Letters at IIT, Ashley Brody, hooded by her sister, Jacqueline Brody, graduate of 2010, John Katigula, hooded by his father, Jack Katigula, graduate of 79, Alexander Kreisman, hooded by his cousins, Professors Philip and Nancy Havlitzel, Ryan O'Keefe, hooded by his brother, Gavin O'Keefe, class of 07, Johanna Ojo, hooded by her sister, Judith Ojo, a graduate of the MPA program in 2011, Richard Pascosim, hooded by his father, James Pascosim, class of 79, and his mother, Judy Pascosim, class of 1980, Thomas Reynolds, hooded by his godfather, Frank Marino, class of 1983, Mary Catherine Swise, hooded by her brother, Patrick Swise, class of 2010, Karen Shaw, hooded by her sister, Ann Shaw, class of 95, Maureen Sherwani, hooded by her father, Abdul Sherwani, a graduate of the IIT master's program in 1984. And finally, Aaron Zalazek, hooded by his father, Nestor Zalazek, um, a IIT grad, undergrad of 1973. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure that I now present the 2013 graduating class of Chicago Kent College of Law. I call upon Associate Dean Sarah Harding to introduce the individual graduates. Thank you, Dean Krent. Only the names of those graduates who are present today will be read. I know all of you are very excited about seeing your friends and loved ones walk across the stage, but please hold your applause until all candidates have received their degrees. So I now have the honor of presenting the 2013 recipients of the Master of Laws in Financial Services, International uh, and Comparative Law, International Intellectual Property, and Taxation. Will the candidates please rise? Christopher L. Q. Tui Chen Yu. Gan Chuen. Li Yang Orlamide O Omolaja Tao Hao Hao Ting Xin Jitsi Yang
Xin Jutsiang. Yen Yen. Yang Zhe. Receiving the degree of Masters of Laws in International and Comparative Law, Abdul Aziz Saad Al Katani. Emmanuel Cantu Castillo. Jalali Chadli. Chen Jiawi. Chen Shi, Dong Lin Yang, Margozata Durka, Feng Chunxiao. Feng Yun Yi Yakub Fonalik Ge Shushan Gua Jun Han Ze En He Xin Yi Maximilian Herley Agnieszka Helena Yaramenko Gi Win Sora Kang Sung Yi Kim, Kevin Crowter Rapin, Li Bo Xiao, Li Song, Li Hui, Li Li. Lee Mo Lee Shu Jen Lee Xiao Yu Lee Yan Ching Liu Mengxi, Liu, Liu Jing, Liu Liu, Liu Wei Ming. Ma Shan Fabiola Moya Castillo Sylvain Naya Chi Chen Lisa 
Sand. Carolina Sobchak. Song G. Sui Jinshin. Sun Di. Sun Ue. Wang Uezu. Wei Uchen. Daniel Voidchuk. Xiao Jing. Shu Wanxin. Oh, sorry. Yes, Shu Wanxin. Yan Wenqi. Yang Umi. Ye Jun Li. Yuan Ye. Jai Yi, Zhong Qingfeng, Zhong Tong, Zhong Yang, Zhong Yue. Zhao Yan. Receiving the degree of Masters of Laws in International Intellectual Property, Sung Chan An. Chen Pei Li. Ding Moore. Gao Wei, Wang Jingjing, Li Na, Lu Minjie. Mao Da Lin, Rima Shalki, Ponpirun Tanyasri, Lakhun Sun. Zhang Yu. I'm receiving the degree of Master of Laws in Taxation, Carolyn Noll Anderson. Thank you. That concludes the presentation of the candidates for the Master of Law degrees.
I now have the honor of presenting the 2013 recipients of the Juris Doctor degree. For December graduates who have passed the bar exam, I will designate their accomplishment by appending Esquire to their names. Again, if you can, please hold your applause until the end. Patricia Abbott. Patrick Newman Abbott. Edward Abramson. Emily Acosta. Just pass me your card. No. There we go. Harris Adam. Allison Adams. James Alex. Katrina Alexopoulos. Christopher Alfano. Benjamin Altschul. Seth Ashton. Duca Batarchulan. Jacqueline A. Bacchiao. Kiyom Ba. Abby Bacchus. Alexander Bonshaf. Max Barak. David M. Barkin. <laughs> Dunstan Barnes. James Batson. Teresa Beckfar. <laughs> Erica Bernstein. Nicholas Betts. Amanda Bulinski. Abby Bohanek, Emily Bach, Rachel Brady, Ashley Brody. Courtney Ann Bronstein, Stephen W. Bird, Donald Kaplan, Anna C. Carvalho, Edward Cashin. Samuel J. Castry III, Jessica Chang, Gregory Shekameguiaz, Woo! 
Jun Chen. Chi Chen. Xiaoping Chen. Amy Cheshire. Eunice M. Chun. Benjamin Cote. Matthew Cogan. Fernando A. Colon. Caitlin M. Conley. Ryan Connery. Samuel J. Cook. Veronica Cortez. Julio A. Costa. John A. Catigula. Catherine Cottle. Kelly Coyle, Roxana Krasivan, Keenan L. Daniels, Daniel W. Davenport, Philip J. Davis, Amanda Del Carlo. Matthew P. Dillinger. Nina Din. Matthew Divalbis. Teresa H. Dooley, Jamie A. Downs, Holly Duddleston, Murray A. Duncan, Anne M. Erickson, Esquire, Jennifer N. Asid, Nimri Asid. Stuart W. Evans, Kyle Fahey, Gillian Fahey, Patrick Farrell, Ryan Fiedler, Kylan Fisher. Matthew Fitterer, Kelly L. Flesner, Aaron M. Forbes,
Grant Ford, Gregory Forfa, Vincent M. France, Lauren Friedland, Misty I. Gamino, Brenna C. Gang, Alina E. Gaga Himiao, Benjamin Gifford, Guilford, Patrick Gill, Kyle P. Gillen, Jason D. Gluskin, Samuel Goldstick, Alexandra Grace, Evan A. Green, Rita, uh, Rita Greggio. Thomas Griffin. Jeffrey R. Grimizer. Blair Giu. Hazel Shermel Gums, Esquire. Bernadette Guy. Justin A. Haber. Daniel Hantman, Luke Harriman, Amy Harvey, Marie Henning. Peter M. Michael Henry, Brandon Holub, yeah. Laura Homan, Joshua Horwitz, Christopher R. Hunt. Lindsay E. Hunt, Savanya L. Hunt, Mihela C. Yuga, Julie A. Jaco. Bradley Jansen, Jay Jansen, 
Gregory R. Jeffers. Michael Anthony Jimenez, Jr. Edwin Johnson. Jarweria Kalimula. Brittany Casper. Brittany Casper. Emily uh, Kotelinich. Raquel Kelly. Thomas Kelly Jr. Ryan A. Kurzweil. Melanie Kibler. Clark, Clark A. Kiesling. Christine Kim. Do Young Kim. Janice Kim. Irena Kin. Tara Korthals. Beata, Beata P. Kosidar. Kimberly A. Kovanda. Marina Kramskaya. Alexander Kreisman. Natella Kuchuk. Angela Kurtz. John Ryan Lawless. William Lawler. Jordan Leibovitz. Ge Lei. Sabrina A. Leonard. George C. Lepaniotis. Vanessa C. Liu. Xiao Jin Li. Joseph Lifsix. Samantha D. Lloyd. Nadia Maki. Connor E. Malloy Esquire. Anne Marfizi. Sarah E. Marfizi. Danielle Marler. John Carter Marshall. Roberto Martel, Jr. Derek P. Martin. Zachary Martin. 
Denise I. Martinez. Michael L. Mason. Ryan Matha. Bridget Mall. Aaron Mayer. John McInerney, Daniel Melko Jr., Eric Michael, Mark Minerich, Amir C. Misagi. Haley Monty, Alana Morgan, Kalak R. Muhammad Esquire, Morgan Muslin. Muslin. Hannah Needham, Michelle M. Neese, Sarah Nelson, Nicholas Nepusil, Catherine A. Newton, Megan L. Nolan. Kelly Aaron Noonan Esquire. Talon K. Nuri. Monica Novak. Ryan M. O'Keefe, Jessica N. Odom, Johanna O. Ojo, Rachel Oliver, Christina L. Olson, Sarah Allison Oppenheim. Andrew Turner Oppenheimer. Prava Palacharla. Charles Park. Seema Patel, Nicholas J. Petrovsky, Justin R. Poe, Richard M. Pascosum, J. Punicol, oh, Daniel Quist. Amir H. Rasvi. Jennifer R. Rieger. Alexander Rich. Renee Resch.
Thomas Reynolds, William Reynolds IV, Sarah Rees, Christopher J. Riley, Michael Munsey Robinson Esquire, Joseph D. Roy, Ani Safarlu, Jeanette S. Samuels, Carlin Sangdahl, Smita Sarkar, Timothy Schaefer, Richard Schaller, Anne K. Schmidlin, Andrew Schmidt, Betsy Schulzenberg, Mary Catherine Schweiss, Jonathan A. Sider, Josh A. Sider. Karen I. Shaw. Marine Shawani. Justin Schlensky. Vladimir Shuliga. Connor S. Sokol, Tanya C. Sienko, Abmianyu Singh, Molly Stokowski, Courtney M. Smallwood, Sarah Smith, Paul Joseph Sobanski, Esquire. <laughs> Sylvia St. Clair. <laughs> Amanda Stamelos. John Andrew Stapleton, Esquire. Brian Strykoff, Tara M. Stringfellow, Stephen Morgan Stoltz, Cecilia Sue, Cynthia Sun. Lay Sun, Kashif Syed, Iyad Tabahi, 
Emily. Oh. Emily Taub. Yeah. Emma K. Telling. Yeah. Philip P. Terrazino. Ryan Toma. Nazanin Tondravi Esquire. Lawrence Tooth. Monica E. Uribe. Anna L. Vasquez. Mary K. Volk. <laughs> Kyle D. Wallenberg. Catherine J. Wardine. Shane K. Wesley. Catherine Wheeler. Jennifer J. Wood. Tyler M. Worrell. Joseph M. Wright. Samantha Yozi. Aaron N. Zaluzek. Daniel Zapata. Linkai Chow, Elizabeth Zink, Christina Sepulveda Zoria, <laughs> Philip Zuchek. Dean Krent, this concludes the presentation of candidates for the Juris Doctor degrees, but today we would also like to recognize two members of the class of 2013 who are no longer with us. Paul DeTrano passed away last fall just before starting his final year of law school. A member of the evening division, Paul was a native of Ohio and attended Kenyon College. He balanced law school with the demands of his full-time job in the Human Resource Department of Xerox. He was also on track to earn a certificate in labor and employment law. In his absence, we welcome his parents, Valerie and Mario DeTrano, to join Dean Krent on stage to receive Paul's degree that we confer posthumously. Mr. and Mrs. DeTrano, please come forward.
Rosemary Tariath passed away this spring. She was very active within the law school and was devoted to public interest law. She was a co-chair of the Kent Justice Foundation auction and participated in our clinical programs. Rosemary also was elected to the bar in Gavel Society and earned a certificate in litigation and alternative dispute resolution. In her absence, we welcome her mother, Jessie Tariath, to join Dean Krent on stage to receive Rosemary's degree that we confirm posthumously. Ms. Tariath, please come forward. Will all the degree candidates please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Illinois Institute of Technology, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws or Juris Doctor and admit to you to all its rights, privileges, and obligations. Please join me once again in congratulating the class of 2013. You may be seated. And now I am privileged to introduce our concluding speaker for today's ceremony, Scott Turow. Mr. Turow has lent his keen eye and analytical abilities to many walks of life. He's a partner in the Chicago office of Dentons, a co former colleague of our own Joan Steinman, concentrating on white collar criminal defense. But he is better known to a generation of law students as the author of 1L, the best-selling memoir about his experiences as a first-year student at Harvard in the mid-1970s. One L focuses to a large extent on Mr. Turow's ambivalence at the changes wrought by law, the law school experience. Changes with both our students and your families are no doubt familiar. In his book, he explains, at home, my wife told me that I had started to lawyer her when we quarreled badgering and cross-examining her, much as the professors did students in class. And it seemed to me that there were other habits to be cautious of. It was a grimly linear, step-by-step -step process of thought that we were learning. The kind of highly structured problem-solving method taught in each of my professors' classes, that business of sorting through details, then moving outward toward the broadest implications, was an immensely useful technical skill but I feared it would calcify my approach to other subjects. And besides rigidity, there was a sort of mood to legal thinking which I found plainly unattractive. Thinking like a lawyer involved being suspicious and distrustful. You reevaluated statements, inferred from silences, looked for loopholes and ambiguities. You did everything but take a statement at face value. So on the one hand, you believed nothing, and on the other, for the sake of logical consistency and to preserve long-established rules, you would accept the most ridiculous fiction. For example, that a corporation was a person. <laughs> what all that showed me was that the law as a way of looking at the world and my own more personal way of seeing things could not be thoroughly meshed. And that at some point, somehow, I would have to learn those habits of mind 
without making them my own. Scott has lived his life keeping true to his own voice. Even as a practicing attorney, he has kept up his writing, publishing eight more best-selling works of fiction and two more of nonfiction. He will publish another novel, which will be titled Identical, this fall. Not willing to serve merely as a legal observer, Mr. Turow more recently has devoted much of his energies to the public interest. He served on the Illinois Commission on Capital Punishment to recommend reforms to Illinois' death penalty system and was the first chair of Illinois' Executive Ethics Commission, created in 2004. His life is an exemplar. Use your newly acquired legal acumen, but overlay it with compassion and with integrity. Please join me in welcoming Scott Terrell. Dean Krent, distinguished faculty members, uh, honored alumni, uh, today's graduates, and the loved ones here to share this memorable occasion with you. Let me be the first outsider uh, to congratulate you on receiving those diplomas that most of you have clutched so dearly. Um, with your law degree complete, uh, you now start on the road to one of life's four great milestones. That would be birth, death, marriage, and now the day that you finally pay off your student loans. Uh, I'm well aware uh, that as I stand here, I'm one of the few remaining obstacles between you and a well-deserved glass of champagne. Uh, but we are all here because we accept the value of ceremony. After all, look around you. Here are hundreds of people uh, with advanced degrees dressed up in costumes so peculiar that you would not even dare put them on at Halloween. Uh, so the costume and the occasion uh, requires me uh, to try to offer you briefly a little bit of advice about your future. Uh, and I should start by acknowledging uh, what all of you already know, namely that there have been more propitious times to graduate from law school. Uh, you are confronting a profession undergoing significant changes. Uh, probably too many law school graduates fewer private jobs, shrinking government opportunities, declining salaries, and, uh, as Luke alluded to, a continuing mood of public distrust of lawyers. Uh, and I realize, therefore, that many of you uh, were not really laughing uh, when I made that joke a few seconds ago about student loans. Uh, some of you may discover that your law school education has, in fact, served as preparation for another calling. Uh, but for those of you who want to practice, there is no doubt that the times will test your passion for the law. There's a silver lining to that. Uh, for people who went to law school when I did in the, uh, in the mid to late 1970s, the road was so smooth that many of my peers never asked themselves if the law was really what they wanted to do. They have famously found themselves years later with good jobs but little real feeling for the profession they more or less unconsciously entered. Uh, those of you who do end up in practice will have a much greater conviction that this is really what you want to do. Uh, and despite all the doom and gloom, uh, let me offer you the witness of experience. Uh, the law remains one of this society's truest meritocracies. After 35 years in practice, I remain convinced that there will always be a place for a good lawyer. It may take time, and there may be some very lean years, but if you have passion and ability, you will find your way. My own passion for the law was something of a surprise to me, so much so that almost 40 years ago to the day, literally the week of May 7, 1974, 39 years really, uh, I was lying on the floor of an apartment in the Mission District of San Francisco, and I was moaning. Uh, in fact, I went on moaning for days. Uh, my pain was emotional, not physical, but I was in agony because I realized that my life was truly hanging in the balance. Like the narrator of Robert Frost's poem, I had to choose which would be the road not taken. I was 25 years old then, 
and the dream of my life had been to be a novelist. I had spent four years by then in the Bay Area, uh, first as a writing fellow and then as a lecturer at the Creative Writing Center at Stanford. Throughout that time, I had been working tirelessly on a novel, but every now and then, the truth would break through in the murky interior reaches of my heart, uh, and I would know the sad fact. The book I was writing was bad. Uh, it was never going to be published. The years I had spent each day was lost. And in that mood, I can recall as clear as a note of music, uh, the emotion that would sweep over me. Oh, I would think. Oh, if I could only live to hold in my hands a hardbound copy of a book that I had written. I was confused about what I ought to do to support myself until that miracle occurred. Uh, in my two years on the steerage level of the Stanford faculty, I had experienced the disturbing realization that I was not really cut out to be a university teacher. Uh, diffidence, however, is sometimes taken for charm, uh, especially, frankly, in academia. Uh, and at that moment, in May of 1974, I had just been offered a tenure-track job at an excellent university uh, in upstate New York. What, what complicated matters uh, was that the same week I'd also received my scores on the LSAT. Uh, I was, frankly, still somewhat shocked that I'd actually taken the test. For one thing, I had been raised by a father, a doctor, who in the early 1970s hated lawyers long before it was fashionable for doctors to do that. Uh, more important, as a child of the 60s, it was still hard for me to envision myself, uh, as lawyers inherently were, as a part of the so-called establishment. Uh, in fact, for that very reason, I had mocked my close friends in, from college when they had all gone to law school. Yet, as the hopes of American progressives had faded with the end of the Vietnam War and the 1972 election, law, to my surprise by 1974, had emerged as probably the most dynamic institution in the society, from the civil rights statutes to the Watergate prosecutions. I saw law as the repository of the American conscience and one of the few remaining arenas where one could labor for change and still retain some hope of success. And so I was lying on the floor because two passions were in conflict. For all my hungry curiosity about the law, a, power, a powerful sense of commitment to myself required that I not abandon my literary dreams, which I'd nurtured since early adolescence. And I was able to get off the floor only when I rejected Frost's implicit suggestion that it had to be one road or the other. The compromise I settled on was that I would go to law school, but with the stubborn vow that I would not go silent as a writer. As it turned out, my decision to go to law school was inspired for many reasons, not the least of them because law school proved the great break of my literary career. Uh, the law, frankly, gave me what every writer needs, a subject, one I cared about profoundly and which I found intensely provocative from the start. After I'd gotten into law school in 1975, uh, I wrote a letter to my literary agent in New York. Uh, by then, my judgment of the book that I had been writing had been completely confirmed. Uh, it had been, that novel had been rejected by then by close to two dozen publishers. Uh, and after all of my agent's work uh, in dragging the manuscript around New York, I was embarrassed to tell her that I'd actually decided to go to law school. Uh, and so, purely as a make-weight, uh, as I announced this to her in a letter, I told her that I had noticed that there were no nonfiction accounts uh, about a law student's daily life. There were, to be sure, books by professors telling students how to study, how to think, uh, but there was nothing uh, in nonfiction from the student's point of view. I really had no intention of writing that book myself. I thought of myself as a writer of fiction. Uh, so it was an idea that I had expected my agent to pass on to somebody else. Instead, she shopped my letter to an editor who wrote a contract on the spot uh, the truth 
as I later learned, was that both the editor and my agent were very drunk at the time. <laughs> that, of course, did not prevent me from signing the contract, uh, but it did lead to problems uh, roughly a year later when I delivered the manuscript to the editor after my first year of law school. Uh, my phone rang, he'd read the manuscript, and he said, quote, I have just one question. Um, I asked, was the prose good enough? Was the tone right? They were fine, he said, but his question was this, why did I ever want to buy this book? Um, and in reselling him on the idea of 1L, I told him about the burgeoning American interest in the law in 1974. I provided statistics and I boldly predicted with little basis uh, that there was going to be a continuing market for the book. 1L appeared uh, a year later at the beginning of my third year in law school. I dare not wait till I graduated for fear that he would change his mind again. Uh, and for a first book, 1L uh, was a success. There were good reviews, there were solid sales. Uh, it was a strong step toward establishing a literary career. Uh, but I frankly barely paused at that crossroads uh, because when I was laying on the floor in San Francisco in May of 1974, I'd actually taken my own measure very well. I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, the problems of the law, how to balance the manifest needs of a diverse, of a diverse society, how to construct rules that are predictable and yet supple in their application, the unending debates about what is sound policy or even ethically and morally correct, all of these questions uh, res resonated with me profoundly and frankly they still do. Um, furthermore, I'd gotten a great job by then as an assistant U.S. attorney here in Chicago. Uh, the federal prosecutor's office uh, here uh, in the Northern District of Illinois had launched an effective broadside against Chicago's endemic corruption beginning in the early 1970s and I frankly was eager to play whatever small part I could in seeing this city where I had grown up uh, set on a healthier course. My eight years as an AUSA culminated uh, with my own role on a large team of prosecutors in something called Operation Greylord that led to the conviction of over 50 lawyers and 17 judges uh, who were paying and taking bribes uh, in the state court system. Uh, the truth is my whole eight years as a prosecutor, I was prosecuting lawyers. Uh, you know, the state attorney general, people paying bribes at the, uh, in the uh, Board of Appeals, which is a tax assessment agency, the courts. I often say that I entered uh, the legal profession with a proctologist view of it. Um, but it still looked good to me. Um, uh, and I had kept the other promise that I had made myself. Most mornings on my way to work on the commuter train, I worked on a new novel. Um, naturally, given the hot wire that electrified me every day when I walked into the courtroom, my book was about a prosecutor albeit one who ultimately became suspected of the murder of his former lover. Uh, at the end of my time as an AUSA and before going into private practice where the firm, it, with the firm that I'm still a partner in, I took three months away from the law and finished that commuter train book. When Presumed Innocent was pub published the following summer, it was a miraculous success. Most people at that point expected me to leave the law. Uh, I didn't, uh, but a year later, after a period when I tried six cases in six months and never managed to put a word on a page, I realized there would have to be some accommodations, and with the consent of my partners, I began to practice part-time. Given the financial success of, uh, of Presumed Innocent, we also agreed that I'd be able to divide my time uh, between paying clients and pro bono work. Um, providing top-shelf legal services to poor defendants in the state criminal courts in this city was the kind of thing that I thought the young man who'd been laying on the living room floor in San Francisco would have told me to do. And I wanted to keep my peace with him because, frankly, his choices had served me very well so far. And that, in a few words, is really how my life has gone. Uh, more of my days are spent as a writer 
uh, but there is always the law, and 35 years along, uh, at a profound level, I still see the law as a noble enterprise, whatever doubts the public may have about what we do. The law is premised on the capacity of humans to make the little part of life we can actually control, which is to say generally the way we interact with one another, to make that part of life more fair. And furthermore, lawyers believe that there is an intrinsic value in fairness. Fairness makes life a little more bearable, a little less cruel. It allows us to depend on one another, and thus it draws the human community closer and in turn enhances humanity's chances to prosper. My life in the law and about the law has been a charmed one, and I cannot give you, uh, today's graduates, any guidance about how to be as lucky as I've been. Uh, at many crossroads, of course, you're not going to be able uh, to solve your problems by saying you'll try to walk both paths. Um, but let me give you the author's message, the real, I think, takeaway that you might get from my experience as you, as you ponder the choices you undoubtedly will have to make along the way uh, in the future. Uh, the fundamental lesson I learned is just this. Values matter. Your personal commitments count, not simply because they are part of living with others uh, in our civilization, but because fortune can't be tamed. Uh, there is no way to promise the sad young man laying uh, on his floor in San Francisco uh, that the books he yearned to write would actually come to be. Yet, if there is such a thing as happiness, then one of its measures seems to be in being able to tell yourself that you tried hard to do what mattered to you, that you refused to lay down before the remarkably random forces that govern our lives, and that you instead tried to live your life by the lodestar of your own beliefs, understanding that they, those beliefs, will provide the greatest meaning to your actions. So as you move on, uh, I urge you to bear in mind not really any advice you'd get from me, but the advice you would give yourself. Remember who you were when you decided to go to law school. Remember who you are today. As the years pass, continue to consider the counsel and passions of that young person. Remember kindly what you want now. Remain loyal to yourselves. Write your own stories, and may the endings and all the times in between be full and happy. Thank you, and congratulations again. I want to thank Scott and reiterate, along with the, the luck and the values, Hard work is important as well, and I know that Scott has worked very hard in keeping his passions alight over these years. And before we conclude, I first want to thank uh, our staff, and particularly Katie Oney, for their hard work in facilitating this graduation. I know that you all have, have benefited. But secondly, I would like our new graduates to stand up, turn around, face your family and friends, and thank them for all their sacrifices they've done for you over this time period. You may be seated. And that concludes the 2013 Chicago Kent College of Law commencement. I ask the audience to remain seated until the academic recession concludes, but then please join us outside in the tent across the street for a special champagne reception. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 